Hello everyone and welcome to a bumper episode of the month's report this week as a huge contingent of horses prepare to launch now that the big wet is finally over. Trainer Chris Muntz joins us to bring us all the latest news and insights. Welcome mate, you survived the big wet okay? Yeah, good Adam. Yeah, no, we had a few wet mornings there under feet and um, the horses were fortunate enough we were able to get them out and keep the, the work up to them and the fitness up to them without obviously being able to gallop them hard and whatnot, but um, we were able to stop them going too stir crazy and, and thankfully it's all gone now, we can get back to the races. Yeah, it's nice to see the sunshine out again and, and there's a big team of runners preparing to, to get stuck into it over the weekend, so we won't muck around. Let's get right into the, the weekend's preview. Uh, racing uh, at Doombin on Saturday with the, the four acceptors there, uh, potentially a, a few that, that won't go around, but we'll, we'll touch on those. Uh, race one, we've got Military Gambler, who missed a run last week at the Gold Coast. He's a two-year-old Rommel Colt, entered for start number two here. He ran in the $125,000 jewel prelude on debut, and you, you, you've been quite happy with him. Yeah, he's a really nice colt, Adam. Um, I thought his run at Caloundra first up was top class. He grew poorly and was very wide the trip, and Bobby didn't have a lot of luck on him as you know to get the right sort of run. But he still kept coming to the line quite well under pressure. So um, from a good draw tomorrow on Saturday, sorry, I just think that um, Justin's going to be able to give him the right sort of run wherever he wants to place him. He'll be able to travel nicely for him, and I'm sure he's going to improve a lot um, just through race experience going into this race on Saturday. Yeah, very good. And, and although the um, the bookmakers aren't giving him too much of a chance, I think he's been installed around that 50 to, to one mark. But obviously with your bit of bit of confidence off the back of that, uh, partners Unibet have, have come up with a generous offer this week, similar to the promotion uh, with Boom Nova a couple of weeks ago, where uh, they're going to offer $11 uh, for the horse to run top five. So it's a field of 10. Uh, just has to to beat half the field home. Uh, and, and as you say, uh, obviously keen about his chances or he is over the odds. So if anyone wants to take up that offer, obviously you can click on, on the links associated through the, the month's racing emails, uh, sign up to, to Unibet and you can just back the horse for the place. And if the horse does happen to run fourth or fifth, you will still get that place dividend of $11. So there you go. We move over to race two where Smart Media was entered here in an open handicap over the 2000. Uh, he looked home last start, didn't he? When he loomed up on the inside. Um, and he's also a dual, dual acceptor for the Gold Coast meeting on Saturday. Yeah, he is. And it's a, it's a bit of a, I'm still up in the air which way to go with him. I think the weather and the track ratings will determine that um, probably on Saturday morning. But I, I would suggest that the Saturday race at the Gold Coast is, is the easier race for him. But he does have a lot more weight there and um, a heavy 10 rating at this point at the Gold Coast as well. Whereas here at Dooman, he's, he's down on the minimum. It's, it's probably a harder race, but he's got no weight on his back. I, th I do think the horse is in good form and he's, he's sort of knocking on the door for a win. So um, I'll probably make my mind up with him on race morning as to which way he goes. But either way, he'll be, he'll be, he'll be running on Saturday. Very good. And another runner who, who looked home last start was Centrefire, uh, who was a huge run first up. Uh, she's entered in a Phillies and Mares Class 3 plate, but unfortunately drawn barrier 17 uh, with the 59 kilos. Um, what are your thoughts there? I would say that she'd probably wait for another day. I mean, we've got jump outs coming up, so I'll just keep her up to the mark, I, I would think, at this stage with a jump out and um, just look for another race in the coming weeks. She, she's in good form, very happy with her, but um, for a bad game like that, we're just wasting our time. Sure. The other runner engaged on the Dooman program is Arthur in charge in race nine, a class uh, six handicap over the 1,200 metres. Um, steps up to the class six after narrowly missing in class four company last start. Uh, and, and has weight relief of, of around five and a half kilos here. Yeah, he's well weighted um, and he does like the soft. So he's got a couple of positives there, but the, the negatives are is he has drawn a bit sticky as well. And um, it looks to be a, a relatively strong race. So I just, um, the fact that he's going well, he was he was unlucky not to win the other night at, at Caloundra. So um, I'm just up in the air with him at the moment, whether he runs or whether we wait for another day. He does also have options available to him in the coming weeks. So could well be that we just wait for another race with him. Yeah, sure. Okay. We move over to the Gold Coast program. We've already touched on Smart Meteor, who is entered for race three, a class four handicap over the 1,800 metres, barrier one with Travis Wolfgram to ride. Race four, uh, Wowsers lines up here. It's a class five handicap over the 1,200 metres. Another dual acceptor, but a dual acceptor for Sunday's meeting. 
Uh, he's second up here and he wasn't far off them when fourth in that uh, race that uh, Arthur in charge finished off well in. No, and I thought he actually raced really well um, that, that night. He just blew out, I think, the last 100 metres. He was a little bit still gross in condition. But um, the horse since then, he's really come on nicely. He's got good colour to his coat now. And he, in my opinion, I think he's tightened up really well for a race like this. So um, we know he loves the wet. He can handle the wet. Um, so uh, he will take his place down there no matter what. Just, um, just uh, whether we run him at the Sunshine Coast on the Sunday or at the Gold Coast, but probably this stage I'll be leaning to the Gold Coast. Sure. And then the final runner entered for the Gold Coast in race nine is uh, Valley of Dreams, which is a class one handicap. Matthew McGilbray to ride from barrier one. Another who's second up uh, and better suited with the step up to 1400, do you think? Yeah, well, she's going really well, this mare. I thought her first up run was pretty good, um, considering she drew poorly and got back. But she really made good good ground late. So um, still a little bit short of her best distance wise, but um, she's certainly doing extremely well. And She'll be getting home pretty solid when a few of these other horses probably be getting jelly legs the last 100 metres. I would think that she'll be still coming on nicely. So um, she's certainly an improver um, going forward. But, uh, you know, we just got to get her start to get her miles under her legs to get out to a bit further distance. Sure. We then move over to the Sunshine Coast program on Sunday. Uh, you've, you've got, obviously, the runners that we've mentioned that are dual acceptors. And the other one is more than value uh, lining up for a fourth career start. Uh, entered for two races here. There's a three-year-old maiden plate over the 1,200 where he's drawn Barry 13 and a maiden plate over the 1,200 where drawn uh, a lot more favourably in barrier two. Yeah, so we'll just probably wait and see um, if he gets a run um, with the good barrier if there's an emergency because I, I would suggest he's probably better placed from a good draw up there. Um, but he's always, he, he, ran good, he ran very well two starts back. The other day, he just um, his legs were spinning on that heavy 10 track at Doombin, so um, I would expect an improved run from him on Sunday, uh, it's, it's as long as we get a, a nice track to sort of a nice fair track to gallop on. And to round out an extended weekend, we move over to the Ipswich meeting, which was originally on Wednesday, was moved to Friday, and then following a track inspection today, uh, it has been moved to Tuesday, the, the 30th of March. So I guess gives us an opportunity that the fields and, and, and acceptors remain intact for that. I guess you, you'll weigh up what may happen um, with some of these runners. There's also trials and jump outs on next week. So, but let's quickly touch on those runners if they do happen to go around. Uh, Buddha's entered for a cutest two-year-old class one plate. Uh, he's a two-year-old by Doomsday, uh, having his second career start and, and first up for the prep over the 800. Yeah, so he, he'll probably be doubtful running. I'll, I'll probably um, jump him out on Monday. Um, he hasn't had a trial or anything yet this time around. So um, we, we only had him entered as a, as, a, as a possible start because of the wet weather um, previously in the week. So for that reason, we'll probably just wait and jump him out on Monday. Sure. Race five is a class one plate over the 1,100 metres. Sakura Star is entered here, barrier two for Justin Huxtable. Uh, and this horse has been knocking on the door, hasn't she, recently and, and drawn nicely. She sure has. And, um, you know, she's drawn, as you said, very well here. And I just thought it was the right race for her. So she will most likely take her place in that race. Um, and But she's probably is a filly that does like the, the firmer track. So we just hope it dries out enough between now and then. OK. And another horse who's been knocking on the door is Vital Source, who was a, a huge run from well back in the field last start. Uh, entered here for a maiden plate over the 1700. Uh, drawn barrier 13, though, for Matthew McGilvray. Yeah, well, she's, um, she had been penciled in to jump out as well, but um, we'll just have to wait and see because I, I don't want to run her on a wet track. She's shown us enough that she can't handle the wet. So um, we had contingency plans in place for her to, if um, we weren't to run her, but we'll, we'll see what the weather does over the weekend. And if the track happens to be dry, well, she may well take her place, but um, I won't run her on a wet track. Her form suggests that she doesn't handle it. Sure. And then the final runner, uh, is last start winner Triptonic, who, who was impressive in winning at the Gold Coast, uh, entered here for a Class 1 handicap, uh, stepping up to the 1350 metres for Travis Wolfgram, who, who won uh, aboard last start. Yeah, well, he does like the wet, um, Triptonic. He, he, um, he handles it quite well. So, um, and he's, he's in good form this horse, so we really need to get him to the races. Hopefully that um, on Tuesday we can get him there, and um, I'm sure he'll be, in the, he'll be in the money there somewhere as well. He's going very good, this horse. 
Very good, mate. Well, that's that's the runners. Obviously, yeah, a big weekend of, of racing action uh, extending through to next week where obviously there'll be lots of uh, a backlog of, of horses either jumping out, trialling. So all the best to yourself and connections this weekend. Good on you, Adam. Thanks, mate. 